Donald Trump is about to make history, becoming the first former president to sit as a defendant in a criminal trial. Jury selection begins Monday in a case involving hush money payments to porn star Stormy Daniels, a trial that could carry major political and legal consequences for Trump, including possible jail time. It's election interference by Biden. Donald Trump set to face 34 felony counts in a Manhattan courtroom. We cannot and will not normalize serious criminal conduct. District Attorney Alvin Bragg accusing Trump of paying porn star Stormy Daniels during the 2016 election to keep quiet about an alleged sexual encounter the two had a decade before. We have drug dealers all over the place, but they go after Trump. Some legal analysts have questioned the legitimacy of the charges. Of all the cases, this is the weakest one. While perhaps weak in legal substance, the trial is sure to be rich in salacious tabloid details about Trump's personal life. Hi, everyone. Including Daniel's claim of an encounter she says happened months after Melania Trump gave birth to son Barron. I came out of a bathroom to find myself cornered. If convicted, Trump's sentence could range from probation to prison. And a guilty verdict could spell bad news for Trump in November, with several polls showing Biden pulling ahead if Trump's convicted of a felony. How can you run for election to be sitting in a courthouse in Manhattan all day long? Joining me here, New York Times journalist and podcast host Lulu Garcia Navarro, editor in chief of The Dispatch and columnist at the LA Times, Jonah Goldberg, Nia Malika Henderson, politics and policy columnist at Bloomberg. And Elietta Johnson, editor-in-chief of the Washington Free Beacon. Welcome, everyone, especially Nia, who is a first-timer. It's great to be here. The New York case is based on the argument that Trump falsified business records to cover up a crime. He claimed he was paying fixer Michael Cohen normal legal expenses when it was allegedly a violation of election laws, hush money to Stormy Daniels during the campaign. Jonah, is this prosecution legitimate, especially raising it from a misdemeanor to a felony. I think it's pretty sketchy. I really do. Look, I, I think on the salacious stuff, the affairs, the cover-up, all that, I think he is guilty. But I don't think any um, anybody but for, but other than Donald Trump would ever have this case brought against them. And it's there's something unseemly about having a, a, a prosecutor who basically campaigned and promised to go after a single man bend, fold, mutilate, and twist the law to go after Donald Trump. Um, and so it's, is it legitimate? I mean, if it were illegitimate, the courts would throw it out as like, you can't bring this. So it's legitimate in the very tech, technical sense. I think it's a bad idea. Nia, let me pick up on that. The feds considered this case before dropping it. The DA's predecessor considered this case before dropping it. So do you think this trial starting Monday is legit? Well, listen, I, it's certainly salacious to uh, Jonas' point. It's going to be, I think, hard to find a, a jury uh, that takes it as seriously, I think, as the prosecutors want them to take it. It's kind of a complicated case, right? It's you know, fal allegedly falsifying business records uh, and then in advance of breaking campaign finance law. Uh, and obviously, it, if he's convicted on all of these counts, I think it's something like 30, uh, then there could be serious jail time. That's very doubtful. I think in the minds of most voters, this is the sort of most petty uh, trial that he faces. There are more serious ones, right. January 6th. But, it, but it's the one that we know is going to happen mm. before and, the yeah, election and, at and this it's, point. And it's, it's going to be two months, and he's going to be trapped in a courtroom for that time. So there are two aspects to this trial, as we've laid out. The strength of the legal case and all the stuff that will come out about Stormy Daniels. And also Karen McDougal, a Playboy model who Trump allegedly had an affair with and money was paid to. Eliotta. How badly do you think uh, the combination of sleaze and a possible conviction will hurt Trump? Well, they're two separate things. Um, we are not learning about new sleaze in this case. There is nothing in this case we're going to learn about Trump's character that is going to shock and scandalize the American public. Uh, everything he does is public. We know everything um, about this. So I don't, I don't think, think that's, that's going to move the needle. And then... On the matter of a conviction, maybe that moves the needle. And I actually, um, I, I think, Nia, there's more of, a, a little bit more of a risk for him. I think he's going to face a very hostile jury in, in Manhattan um, that may actually convict him. Um, in terms of proving the case, I think that's a little bit harder because they're going to have to prove that um, 
Trump rather than, you know, some junior, you know, some junior employee in Trump Tower who actually entered this in terms of like the entered the business record that he had control over how it was entered and in terms of the business record falsification. Can I just jump in just very briefly, though, and just say, I, I don't think that that's true. Um, this is the whole thing that everyone always says about Trump. We're never going to learn anything new about him. We already know all the terrible things that he's done. What is this case actually going to do? Having him sit in a courtroom, even though this is not going to be televised, which I think was a mistake, but... Even so, it's going to get an enormous amount of scrutiny. He is going to be sitting in this courtroom when he should be campaigning. And that is what people are going to be hearing instead of his ideas for the country. Yeah, that will hurt him. But I don't think there's anything sle like we're not learning anything new about what he did. with. But it's Stormy reminding Daniels people of, of how sordid, truly, how sordid, truly some of Trump's dealings. And really certainly, were. I think the chaos around uh, Donald Trump that we've obviously seen uh, it, while he was in office, out of office, and I think that kind of idea. Listen, some people say, well, listen, is this going to hurt him with any sector of voters, particularly evangelicals? I would say no. They like him uh, no matter what. They obviously all know about uh, this possible dalliance that he had with the porn star. So in that aspect, I don't think it'll hurt him. But I think uh, in general with voters, it, it, it won't help. Let's put it like that. <laughs> it certainly won't help. Uh, then and there's abortion. Trump said this week that abortion should be left to the states. But less than 24 hours later, Arizona reinstated a 160-year-old law banning all abortions except to save the life of the mother. And that had Trump doing damage control. That'll be straightened out. And as you know, it's all about states' rights. That'll be straightened out. And I'm sure that the governor and everybody else are going to bring it back into reason. And that will be taken care of, I think, very quickly. Uh, Lula, Trump reportedly thought that it was safer to take the state's rights argument rather than a lot of people thought he was going to do a national ban, but he was afraid, allegedly, that he would then own that. But given the fact of what happened in Arizona 24 hours later, is he off the hook on abortion? No, he's really not off the hook on abortion. In fact, that was the gift that kept on, that is going to keep on giving throughout the campaign. I mean, the very fact that Arizona has now resurrected a law from the 1800s at a time when actually it wasn't even a state. Um, this law was, you know, enacted by one white man back then. I mean, it's the whole thing is absolutely insane that women in this day and age are now held hostage by laws two centuries ago. Um, what I will also say is that no one believes at this point, I think, um, that Donald Trump won't, when he is in office, if he indeed becomes president again, is not going to back whatever his supporters want to back. And there is a very big plan for there to be um, federal enactions of things like the Comstock Act, which is another law from the 1800s as well. Let me bring Jonah into this. And that's why I wonder about the wisdom of having decided to go the state's rights route. Won't he now have to answer for any restriction in any state? And there are a bunch of them. Yeah, look, I'm actually very sympathetic to the states' rights argument, but I think he's. It's, I'm not running for president, and so he has the problem of when abortion. When Arizona takes a very strong pro-life position, he has to condemn it, which is going to annoy pro-lifers. When another hey, state does something, let me ask you about that. Yeah. He says states' rights, and then as soon as Arizona takes a position, he yeah. says change it. Yeah. Right. So this is the, this is the dilemma he's gotten himself into, as you say, is that he has to comment on every single thing that happens. If there's a very pro-choice law that comes up. He's going to have to comment on that. If there's a very pro-life law that comes up, he's going to have to comment on that. So all he's done is create a cycle of constant new news pegs to talk about abortion, and that's the one thing he didn't want to talk about.